Test, Test, Test. Good, looking good. Okay, excellent. Right, so just gonna finish doing this as a bit of warm up. We'll probably leave adventure writing after that for now. Hopefully, having chat to talk to will help an issue. I Uh, this is for Adventure 1. Uh, what we have done since we last talked about this one is we've written the rules for Manor and the Monsters. We have also written up a lot of the village. I just need to finish here with the Mayor's Manor. The Mayor's Estate and... Um, I won't go into the manor grounds today, probably. We'll continue with urban subclasses. And, yeah. That's my thought, anyway. Just checking couple of things before we get going proper before we get going heavy like before we get going heavy like before we get going So I'm just checking a couple of bits. Uh, so I'm just, none of this is making any noises. No. Um, Okay, no, no one's going on that, but let's go ahead with it. So, right. So, so far, I basically each of the big locations get 
it's a paragraph of brief description or two and then um, so i've got to kind of do here is we need a secretary's desk um I'm being fairly loose, like I don't want to do a map for every building, considering these are just meant to be places where if the players choose to research. So the intent here is a player will research the research will be able to make it so that the party can um get the information get they get more information they get context um so if they went to the chapel they they can get basically told um did i not update the title of this stream shit hold on Okay, that should have updated it, because we're not discussing one D&D, that was the other stream we did. What we are discussing today... ...is, uh, what we're discussing today... ...is a bit of adventure writing. And then we're doing our modern subclasses. But I'm going to give a bit of time for people to get in before we do the modern subclasses. Plus I'm using this... Um, there's a bit with the subclass design where I'm kind of stuck. So I'm giving me brain something that's kind of on topic, but not that to think about. So I can just kind of let the thought mull over in the back of my head. I don't want to do the thing. So. I don't want to do this. Looking at it in dark mode just because it's getting dark here in the UK and this is easier on my eyes. Dear God, my eyes need it. Um... Well, that's one thing I didn't mention. Uh, how is everyone finding the cool new trailers? Because we've got Hades 2 coming out. Which I am excited by. I have to come in our.
Oxford.
Yes. Okay, excellent. So we have done chapter three, which is the village. Where did I? I bold these. Heading four. Heading four. Well, I think I'll leave it there for now. Let's jump to subclass. Let's a quick, just double check on my... Yeah. So, where are we now? So, obviously, last time we mentioned the cyberneticist, we mentioned the barbarian. What we have done from last time is we've done the Bard College of Influence. Uh, just so everyone is on the same page. These subclasses are based on modern day settings. So it's current tech level or kind of near future cyberpunky. It's not too advanced sci-fi. So the Bard College of Influence is basically um it's the streamer college it's the college for doing what i'm doing now streaming so effectively at third level the key thing is you have an electronic device that's your streaming device that for you is your arcane focus for your spell casting you have a view account which is between 0 and 10 
when you complete a short or long rest, you roll a d4. If it's an odd number, you decrease it by the amount rolled. If it's an even number, you increase it by the amount rolled. If you roll a critical hit or do something the DM thinks is interesting, you can increase your view account by 1d4. Then you have chat interactions, which is the other big mechanic at level 3, which is basically, if you're holding your streaming device as a bonus action, use your bardic inspiration to roll on the stream alert table. Your bardic inspiration die determines what the effect is. Um, when you use an action, you can use an action to choose a creature in 30 feet of you to be the target of the effect of the stream alert. Once you've done so, the creature gets the effects. Um, so, yeah. You can get a follower, which is for the next 10 minutes, you get a bonus to checks. Basically, you get free bardic inspiration bonus. And the other thing is with the stream alerts, some of these will buff and uh, reduce your stream account, your view count. So I thought that was the best way to do it, it was kind of this... Uh, fun little system where the more you where as you get these chat interactions it will affect your stream so basically followers you get a bonus to checks hosting uh, someone's hosting your stream for a minute you can basically hit someone with a bard inspiration die hydrate is basically a creature a target and a creature of the Target's choice gets uh, some temporary hit points. Subscription. You get some gold and heroic inspiration. Then as your bardic inspiration goes up, you can then get raided. At which point the target... Uh, you can pick a target and... Whoever the target is is able to teleport. Everyone's sending you encouraging vibes, which is you can give a target temporary hit points. Uh, and while they've got temporary hit points, they get a stat bonus. Always you can pick yourself for these. Chat drama. Drama's happening in chat, at which point a creature needs to pass a wisdom save or take psychic damage. Don't uh, Chat's donating to you, so you get gold. Uh... Uh, you get gold pieces, you and a target get some temporary hit points. Uh, the target gets a plus one to hit and wound rolls. Flame raid. Um, your chat's being hateful, so you get to so you can give someone the ability to breathe fire. Self care check is basically you get some healing. Negative feedback is psychic attack on someone, and then poll is you're hoping that you you give the stream a poll, and you're hoping for luck. Um, roll your bardic inspiration die on a low roll, you get a negative effect based kind of off the deck of many things. On a high roll, you get a positive effect based off the deck of many things, but you also get a you are a positive negative based on it. At sick level, you can add your view count to charisma checks to persuade people, deceive people, or intimidate people. Uh, and if you have a bard spell that requires gives the charm condition. Your targets have their saving throw reduced by your view count. So basically, these things are very light abilities, but that's because there's a lot of words up here that have the main randomness of the class, subclass and the entire thing about you're a streamer, you're here to entertain the viewers. And you want the view count high, because these high-level things is where you get a bonus for having it. Um... Yeah, so then you have streamer challenge, which is basically you can request a challenge from the DM. If you carry it out by the time you complete your short long rest, you have you regain a bardic inspiration die. Um, which then means you can use more stream alerts if you want to, or you can help other people. If you fail 
when you next roll stream alert. You have to roll two dice and pick the lowest. And you lose some viewers. And then, professional streamer, you... When you're on the stream alert table, you get to roll twice and pick which of the two results you like. When you make an ability check or attack roll, you can use a Bardic Inspiration die. Uh, and then if it hits, you get a free stream alert table roll and increase your view account. And if it still fails, you get a chat challenge and reduce your stream account by seven. So I quite like it because it's effectively a subclass that's just entirely about being a streamer it's obviously exaggerated in quite the lengths you have to go to please your chat but um i thought it was neat that's all nothing amazing just i think it's neat um blood hunter order of the cryptid this is an adapted version of order of the lichen uh, because to a degree werewolves are kind of a cryptid it's just we know that they are firmly in folklore uh, in our world um so order of the cryptid is basically you get bonuses to your senses um for wisdom perception checks and dexterity stealth checks made to hide amongst natural features uh, and then you can transform into a cryptid so when you take this class you get to pick two benefits one downside on top of combat features and basically whenever you transform you get that thing so combat feature is basically you might grow claws tail fangs horns whatever you get a pick because you're a cryptid and basically you get that as an unarmed strike um so some of the things you could do you could become a war first so you can squeeze through gaps you could be a sea creature and a lot of these have at 11th level you get something it gets slightly better so it goes from you can hold your breath for an hour to you can breathe underwater um let's have a look so yeah you can be a blood drinker you can have chameleon skin you can teleport when not being looked at you can see in the dark and then counter to that you then have downsides which is either you will attack the nearest thing you need to eat a corpse or you uh, basically let out a psychic screen that damages all nearby creatures um then you get a speed change uh, and your unarmed attacks get better and then supernatural transformation is when you transform you get to pick one of these things so you can be a curse bringer which is basically you get to be slender man you can curse someone for horrible effects you get frightful presence future sight leaning into the mothman a bit there so and all of these have a when you're 20th level you get something uh, paralyzing agent regeneration you can just cast spells um brand to the marked um yeah basically you get to use your stuff a bit and then you have curse of the hunted which is a blood curse which is um Pick a creature within 60 feet of you that can hear you. It must make a wisdom saving throw or become frightened. Uh, while the creature is frightened, as a bonus action, you can teleport next to, uh, to the nearest space behind the frightened creature.
but yeah it's just it's just about making a custom cryptid that you can turn into city hasn't changed druid hasn't changed fighter is the driver um how the driver works is basically it's based off of the trope um, for heist teams so you are the driver in in a heist scenario you are the person who gets behind the wheel of a car but also like for when you're not in a vehicle you also get some benefits to using guns um so at third level you basically get uh, maneuvers but they're all stunts for when you're in a land vehicle uh, technically i'm going to say vehicle but really you're only going to use it for land vehicles um so yeah you can mount dismount and you can make you get advantage on save throws to not fall off or out of so you've got stunts like boost your speed you've got um a stunt that lets you do the thing where like the lorry is about to cross you manage to get your vehicle sliding under the lorry or driving past the lorry with just an inch to go and then the person who's chasing you can't follow uh drive-by shooting evade, uh basically evading attacks uh hit and run is you can jump into an opponent's vehicle and if you successfully manage to knock them to zero you can force them out and you take over the vehicle um landing shooting is basically if you fall out of the vehicle you can shoot on the way down parkour is basically for two-wheeled vehicles you can try and mount the caveman jump over a wall etc Reload slide is basically you get to do a long turn, and while you're doing that, you're reloading your gun. Stable drive is basically you keep your vehicle level no matter what, so that your allies get a bonus to their ranged attacks. We then go to Ali Gunner, Ali Gunner who can basically um, reload their gun one-handed in case they're holding a shield while going down alley, and at close range they don't have disadvantage to shooting. Also the ability to plant their shield so that they can hold the firearm two-handed. Uh, suppressive fire is basically you can make ranged attacks and your opponents can choose to get a bonus AC, but then they have disadvantage at shooting back. Uh, you then get proficiency vehicles to your air, and when you run out of stunt die, you get stunt die. Yeah, then it goes to you can reload a gun as a bonus action and your firearm attacks score a critical hit on 19 or 20. It's not the most exciting subclass in the world, but the, the key thing is you get to do a couple of cool things with a car. Um, so here's where we got to. Here's where we are currently at with the designing. Uh, way of the Urban Freedom Monk. Basically, you are the parkour monk. Uh, so at third, you get athletics or acrobatics. Proficiency, you got to pick. Acrobat, you... Um, while grappled, you can... If there's an environmental feature you can kind of use for leverage, you get advantage on the gra escaping the grapple check. If you successfully escape the grapple, while having advantage, you can use flurry of blows after escaping the grapple, because normally you have to make an attack action, then you can flurry of blows. And while in an urban environment, you ignore non magical difficult terrain. Then at sixth level, it's you can climb without using extra movement. You get a bonus to jumping equal to your dexterity modifier. And if you make a running jump, as long as you keep moving and you're not stopping to do something else, you can treat multiple jumps 
as all being from a running start. And you get to use flurry of blows after taking the dash action. Um, and then at 17th level, we have it that as a bonus action, you can expend one to six key points. You gain a fly speed of 10 feet per key point for the turn. You can also activate this as a bonus, as a reaction, sorry, to falling. Basically, the aim here is that you're using it to make that impossible jump possible. You're just better at parkouring than other people. Um, now, what I want to do is the 11th ability. Uh, so it has a thing where basically if you're in an urban environment it's now you could ignore all difficult terrain and you can move across slippery ice without needing a dexterity saving throw so it's basically an upgrade of the third level thing it's basically in an urban environment you know how to dodge things that would normally be difficult terrain and to move with any slips or anything to your advantage But what I want to do is I want it that it's another combat ability. So kind of here you've got kind of a combat ability that if you escape a grapple with advantage you can flurry your blows. Here's got a kind of combat ability that after you take the dash action you can flurry your blows. Um, I don't want to do another flurry of blows because monks already have so many key points. And then I'm doing a key point tax with Master of Parkour, which is trying to get you to use key points to make impossible jumps possible. So I don't want another drain of key points. What I want to do is kind of have it where if you are moving along a vertical surface or if you are kind of jumping you get a bonus to attack so it's kind of like um say someone is on the fire escape shooting down at your party if you jump up you get advantage to kind of grabbing and knocking their feet out from under them if you're above someone and you choose to jump down onto them, you get an advantage. If you are facing someone in an alleyway and you're choosing, instead of just punching them to kind of run up the wall and give them a wheelhouse kick to the face, you're getting an advantage. I've just got to work out kind of how to make that work. And that's the difficult part. Um, that is the difficult part. So, how... So, the other thing I need to check is...
and include jumping. Okay. So if we maybe go with What about if we say, if you, um, make an attack after using your movement to jump, fall, or, um, move along a vertical surface. So, um, so, Let's have a look at monk abilities. So, so you can use decks for your damage. Yeah, done. You get an extra attack when you hit a creature, you can stun it. Uh, let's see how other classes do damage. Choice. Right, was that front of presence? Okay. Uh, Just a modifying play strength and dexterity. Okay. 
kind of like that one. You buff the damage by your martial art turn. Um. Primes frightened. It's a lot of damage for key, which we don't want to do. We don't want to use key. It might use. How's it there? Where did it here? So it's one solution tends to be a target. Yeah, let's let's do that. So if we Kind of builds on itself, so it's have a chance to. Uh, you can use the environment to give your attack advantage when your attack has advantage. Once per turn, you deal extra damage. But the other nice thing is. Okay, I think that works. So, next one we need to look at. It's Paladin. So, this isn't actually written. This is, um, I've just copy and pasted something. So, I have a rough layout of how the ability um, progression works level wise. So, Jerry, you have two channel divinities. Is it, uh, are there any, because the last thing you want to do is break a rule, like Cleric, uh, so was it Guided Strike, Conquering Presence, okay, it looks like there is no commonality in the Channel Divinities, so that's Fine, that's good. So we can do whatever we want here. We need to come up with spells. We need an aura. We need another ability, and then we need an avatar form. Okay. And then. I think I need to do later for all of these classes. I need to write a brief law snippet, which for the paladin will include what their oath is. So, let's think a sec. Okay, so my current thoughts are. On Paladin, I want 
to do something around activism and kind of because you're trying to think where where does paladin kind of fit in a modern day setting because you've got to make it fit in the setting but you also have to take into account that all the current D, &D subclasses exist so like if you were to say oh it's a riot police person or something like oh so it's oath of conquest it's about forcing people to do things your way kind of the very lawful but not good um side of paladin um you probably don't want something going down too religious route that's so over devotion uh, we already vote for the ancestors for nature Oath of Glory is like personal heroism. Open Sea Watches Vengeance. Yeah, so my current thought is Let's look at Over Vengeance a sec, because I kind of don't want to tread on their toes, because Over Vengeance feels like the other one that you could very much take into a modern setting. It's kind of like the Vigilante Oath. Wicked. Yeah, so I don't really want to do vengeance. So let's think. I do think. I do think it's probably going to be like the oath of justice. I think it's going to be the oath of justice. Ah. It's going to be the Oath of Justice. And... So, ooh. But I didn't want to see because of what that... Why did you do pop-up then? Um, yeah, so, Oath of Justice. As we can. So I need to modify the spell list that we can do later as we try to pick spells that fit the theme of justice. Uh, do, do, do. We need two channel divinities. Hmm. Let's think about how we want to do this subclass first. So it's about activism. It's about standing up against authoritarianism. The aura can maybe be some of this like temporary hit points for those that are around. Hmm. 
maybe a healing channel divinity because D paladin doesn't get a channel divinity as standard does it it's uh get lay on hands which is okay we got third sacred Oh, so you have your oaf spells and then you have child divinity which there isn't one so we do have aura protection which is bonus to saving crows we have anti-frightened okay now what if This is your temporary hit points aura. We have we have something healing. get one more unique ability um do we go with something defensive or offensive or may something that's a bit of both Avatar of Justice is easy. It's the same as all of them. You, it's it's easy to do the Avatar thing because that is just leaning to leaning to over the top. The question. So what do we put here? So we have an aura of temporary hit points. We have an aura of anti. Frightened. We have an aura of anti, uh, an aura of better saving throws. We can divine smite for spells. We can. Or uh, maybe a speech ability, like... Yeah. Yeah, that all works.
just the entire seven is off. Spelled in time bubble. Personal spell. Second level spell. Okay, yes, that's third, fourth, fifth. Yeah. No, I like what we've done here. Right, so Cyan Mind Jacker we're not going to touch at the moment because I need to work on hacking rules for that one. Uh, I don't want to jump into the region. Hmm. Just at the moment, I'm trying to think about how word these things, so it might be wise just to jump and come up with some outlines for different for the different classes so this one so this one is different this one is the kind of urban explorer you want we want kind of knowledge monkey skills Rather than necessarily combat. Which means I'm going to have to close you, open you, where are we? Where are we? Sure. Go into the 1D and D play test because. I might as well try and design Ranger to uh might as well try and design Ranger and Rogue to actually fit the material. Yeah, my current thought is if I'm designing new subclasses at the moment, I'll design them to be one D and D compatible. Luckily, nothing so far is super incompatible. It's mainly um, the level you get things would just have to be different. Uh, obviously, with cleric, you get blessed strikes um, as part of the subclass instead of the class. So we've done bard. A ranger. So, what was it? One, five, nine, thirteen, seventeen. Okay, so that's, that's really the same. Uh, they now get expertise. Favorite enemies, just they get Hunter's Mark. Into subclass. Do, 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 do. Increase movement. There's no point giving them climb and swim speed because that's included in the base class. Bump suction become visible. So we're going to want, let's see how they've done this one. So third, 
three, six, ten, fourteen. That's currently it's three, three, six, ten. What did you get? All your subclass stuff one level early. Okay, that doesn't change too much. Weapon. Well, increases mark with your hunter's mark. So, so there is a kind of idea that I will perhaps. Yeah, I'll probably want to try and have one ability tied to Hunter's Mark. But we want a Knowledge Monkey skill, a Hunter's Mark skill. So what was the concept? The concept I came up with was... Yes, because I called it originally the archaeologist. But it's more urban than that, so it's urban explorer. Um... Yeah, it'll be... Let's have a think a second. So you're an urban explorer. So I probably want... I don't want too good movement stuff because otherwise at that point I'm treading on the toes of Parkour Monk. Um, we don't really want Parkour Monk. In Ranger we want something different so we got a skill. We might have one or two skills that are archaeology based. History based. So then maybe we have three more skills. Feel free to join in if you uh, have ideas, chat. I'm just thinking at the moment, just. We got a couple of knowledge skills. I need something Hunter's Mark related. Something Hunter's Mark related. Two other skills. Let's look at this another one. What do you think of when you think urban explorer? That's that's sometimes the best way is what tropes already exist in that topic. Which is difficult because What tropes 
do exist in urban exploration. Urban exploring, urban exploring. So common trope. So let's have a look. Uh, so what we got? We got So, you could go down the route of giving See, part of me feels like I might end up treading on Gloomstalker's toes because the thought occurs you're an urban explorer. What are common things? The dark and sneaking. So, what if we gave most Ranger players put very simply, are going to take. Because how many skills do we get? There's proficiencies. Here we go. So you get three. So. What about if we gave Slight of Hand and Dark Vision? They want to go down the stealth route, they can go down the stealth route themselves. If they want to be good at investigating stuff, they can also do that themselves, because Ranger already permits this. Um, So maybe third level you would get dark vision. And sleight of hand as one skill. Which isn't that powerful considering how many races of dark vision is standard. And we give you a knowledge skill. The next level we give you something to do with hunter's mark. Middle skill. I think how I would want it to work is... Hmm. 
Actually, no, I can maybe merge that with the Hunter's Mark skill. I was thinking, what is a common... I don't really want to have a Hunter's Mark. How do they word Hunter's Mark? Is it... You always have Hunter's Mark prepared. Doesn't count against spells you know. Don't have to concentrate, but you still only get You only have 15 spell slots, which uh, that isn't too bad. So my current thought is, um, it's a bit like this, it's a bit like Iron Mind. Um, Okay, it isn't actually like this. I was going to give you advantage, not actual proficiency. Because my th thought... Uh, my thought at the moment is I would... Um, give you an advantage on wisdom saves but I think because it's the most common urban exploration videos you see is often the ones where it's like, oh, we found a ghost. Um, we could also just break the mold and not try and do what they're trying to do with the new stuff where we give you something for Hunter's Mark. We could also just not do that. Um, that's probably a good subclass to look at. Let's look at uh, who are you? Rise of Walker. Because this is kind of the vibe we're going for. It's exploration, it's learning. So here you get to tech portal. I oh, see, so even they have a combat ability. That's a very combat, a very combat heavy one. Um, so. You we could do it where you have advantage on the mental checks. Uh, advantage on the mental checks against the target, you've got Hunter's Mark. 
do that as the 10th level, because that's somewhat powerful. The 6th level we could maybe do... with difficulty getting lost. Yeah, so if we maybe give you another knowledge, difficulty getting lost. Um, and then your capstone. Bloody hell, what's the capstone going to be for an urban explorer? I don't even know what you would do as capstone for an urban explorer. Um, You don't get lost as part of your third level knowledge monkey ability. We make sixth level be something hard. No, because you want Hunter's Mark to be the thing, so that's tenth level. So we make sixth level something combatty so that we're meeting the um, combat mass. My current thought is maybe you have Edva. Oh, your third level could be you have advantage on investigation roles to find information, to researching um, information about buildings. With the second bit being, you also have the ability to um, perfectly memorise maps. And then once you've walked down the route, you remember the route you've walked. Copying from old Minotaur stuff. The other third level ability can be your dark vision sleight of hand. Sixth level. We give it that you are good at recalling knowledge about things. We could tie that to the Hunter's Mark, but I don't really want to tie that to the Hunter's Mark because you might not target the thing with Hunter's Mark. Because Hunter's Mark, you need to know what the target is. So I'd rather have the Hunter's Mark be the mental defense, have the knowledge be not Hunter's Mark related. And maybe as part of the knowledge thing, we let it that, like, if you remember a certain amount about a creature, you can learn a combat thing as well. Still don't know what the capstone's going to be. So, let's 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 put one thinking into things here. So here,
okay let's rethink this maybe instead of doing it that way what if instead we go So instead of it being we're tying Hunter's Mark to giving an additional effect that helps recall knowledge, if you recall knowledge, so you get a general, you can recall knowledge effect, but then it's if it's recalling knowledge about a creature, your Hunter's Mark gains an extra thing. Um, That could work. So then you kind of have a combat effect. We're not completely leaving Ranger out of that. Then. So we have research skill. Exploration skill. Research into combat skill. Combat skill. What will be the ultimate effect? Let's have a look. Uh, let's take inspiration from that which has come before. So, Ranger, let's have a look. So, Beastmaster is. You get to share spells. Drake Warden is. If your drake gets better, okay. Gloomstalker is really nice defense. Horizon Walker is bloody hell. These are all good effects. Um. All very defense focused. Um, yeah, they are all very defense focused. But any of these not defense. Don't tend to be something defensive. In that case, I thought then I lost it. Um, we have entry, we have exploration, we have research and knowledge. I'm not sure what we're missing here. 
We're missing something, I just don't know what. All about exploring. And going to the places. That has been lost and forgotten. Because that's where the bad things linger that threaten society. I had an idea earlier, and that's the problem. I kind of had an idea, and now it's gone off out of my head. So, let's have a look. So we've got... This D let's see. What if we make it support range of what if the ultimate effect it's a danger sense like barbarian has uh, so you'll get much more cool effects than that um Okay, thought. What if it's like all the others, it's as a reaction to something happening to you, you get a defensive bonus. Like resistance to that damage type. But you also get a piece of knowledge which then ties back to the earlier knowledge skill. Which then buffs the hunter's mark. And maybe we have an extra thing of when you gain a fact about a creature, the Hunter's Mark glows like fairy fire so that uh, other characters can see it.
That would maybe work. Um, Like, it's not, this is not going to be the strongest ranger subclass, but the key thing is, it's, it's an urban explorer, it's about finding the danger. Hopefully, the ranger has a party with them who actually then deals with the danger. That would be the hope. So... That's my thought, anyway. Again, feel free to tell me if I'm being an idiot. And doing something that's a lot less interesting. So, expertise again, sneak attack again, these cans, cunning action, rogue subclass. So, was it three, six, ten, fourteen? So let's see what else they get. Uh, expertise, these can sneak attack. Uncanny dodge. Subtle. Which one subtle strikes? Oh, there's an advantage. Are you more attack? No, it does. Oh, okay. So, bef so sneak attack. It's you don't have advantage if your allies are being flanked. Here you do get yeah, if you were being flanked. No attack roll has advantage. So let's look at actual rogue subclasses. So we have Assassin, Inquisitive, Phantom, Soul.
So the cyber operative is heists and teleporting through internet connections. So to a degree, they'll actually be like, I could see fast hands. Uh, being one. Maybe. So they probably would have something equivalent to fast hands, but for hacking, they would have. Let's have a look. So, so you got the kind of fast hands equivalent. So soul blades at six. You probably have something that lets you teleport through the internet. Um. That's where the teleportation skill would come in. Uh, maybe that other third you still need a combat ability, don't you? Um, so at six they get teleport. Then maybe here they get like a digital invisibility thing. No, maybe here we give them the digital invisibility. Um, on that, I don't know, maybe electric stuff. I don't really want to give stunning because that uh, has the monk problem. Or I go because tenth level stunning isn't so bad. Author of which is digital soul.
So A2 is the cool, like, avatar -y or whatever, the sorcerer. Um, Some sort of the idea for this subclass is kind of they are made by machines. Um, Good news is everyone, I think. We've basically come up with the design briefs for each subclass. Um so, yeah, that's good. Just uh, got a message, I just need to check. I'm just going to go and say I'm very happy with what we've managed to do so far today. Because basically, um, 
what takes me a lot of time is actually conceiving the things writing them out isn't too bad because well it, it can be like with the monk where i sat there going how am i going to word this attack um so there'll be certain bits where maybe i'll get stuck for wording but that could be what we cover next stream but for now we've been going for a couple of hours and i'm caught i'm very happy where we've gotten to because basically i've got all these classes planned out um so yeah we do now got kind of lost in the uh, creative juices God, is everything broken? No, no, nothing's broken. Good. Um. Okay. Well, let's let's finish it up for today. Let's go raid um, Olikisha, who is currently live to some Animal Crossing. I'm gonna say thank you, everyone, for joining today. Uh, okay. So I'd like to thank everyone for coming and everyone for joining. You've managed to do well today in the design space. And we'll see you all next time.